the engineers on LV-223 were an imposing group of elegant soldiers, with technology that far exceeded that of Weyland yutani and a brute strength that not even the mighty Predators could match. In the main cannon, they either attack physically or with the weaponized pathogen. But in the expanded universe, they carry advanced laser weapons, and in the unused scripts, they have a device worthy of planetary creators and destroyers that fires off invisible knots of space-time. The engineers of Dark Horse's Fire and Stone and Life and Death comic series are brutal tanks who also carried an array of biomechanical handheld weaponry. The first of these devices is found on the Crash Juggernaut on LV-223 by Galgo Helder and functions like a laser rifle, yet with its own unique Giger-inspired design. Instead of a traditional stock, the rifle had an alien-like appendage that wrapped over the hand, and two more that came off of the pistol grip, one like a tail that curls under the trigger, while the other wraps back around the arm and looks somewhat like a chestburster. Their functions are unknown, they are never used for bracing when firing, though they may be supplying the charge for the device. There is a secondary grip for the other hand, yet it's light enough to be used by one by Galgo. It seems to fire when needed without a charge up and we only see single shots fired, but they are powerful and able to cut right through predators, the armored shells of the aliens, and it was even able to do damage to a shielded engineer. It never required a reload or to be recharged in any way in over a year of use and in the end it was given by Galgo to the predator known as Ahab who became a protector and friend of his over the series. Smaller handgun versions are seen with biosuited engineers. Their shape is more traditional and they fire a beam like the one emitted from Galgo's rifle that's able to go through a colonial marine in standard armored gear. The last of the handheld devices is the most devastating example of the group. It's similar to a rifle in shape but it's larger and more akin to a laser flamethrower than it is to a rifle. The top of it above the barrel area is curved upwards and ridged with spines and vents and on the end of it is a device that opens up like a flower petal to release a wave of energy. When charging up it has a red glow that shines through the cracks and vents on it while it gives off a distinct humming sound. What follows is either an area attack capable of killing an entire wave of xenomorphs or a condensed wave of energy that was able to melt some unfortunate human explorers. The Juggernaut, the Chariot of the Gods, is a massive biomechanical horseshoe-shaped ship based on the derelict of LV-426. The example from LV-223 was a bomber and it had the ability to release hundreds of weaponized pathogen urns in a single drop. When David attacked Planet 4, the Juggernaut in his possession carried thousands of the urns, yet only a few hundred were needed to doom the planet. The urns fell only a short distance in a swirling pattern that resembles a strand of DNA before they exploded, dispersing the black death held inside. Now swirling through the air, the infection begins to rain down and find its victims. Anyone in the immediate area is quickly overcome with immense pain as the pathogen surges through their veins where it then pours out of their faces as they die in a final grasp for relief. What is left is a field of burnt out and charred husks waiting to fall to ashes. And when the pathogen settles, new alien hybrids will spread out and conquer the rest of the planet. The RPG expands even further on these bombings where people farther out from the release point of the pathogen, depending on the amount of their exposure, would become various stages of anathemas, a process that we saw Charlie Holloway in the second stage of before he died. The engineers are seeders of life throughout the universe and as such they are able to create hostile organisms that can be used for their benefit. When something more subtle than a pathogen bombing is needed, the engineers could simply insert deacons, neomorphs, or xenomorphs into the environment. In any of the various stages, adults for quick results, or ovomorphs, fungal pods, or an infected engineer for a slower approach. Engineers are already powerful specimens who tower above both humans and predators, yet it's possible that this strength is amplified even further, like a marine in a power loader by their pressure suits. All of the engineers on LV-223 were wearing these suits, a biomechanical covering that is influenced by the design of an alien torso. We have seen larger engineers without the suit, like the sacrificial engineer, but it's possible that this covering is more than just a suit and is instead a modification of the engineer itself made using the accelerant. The sacrificial engineer had veins of a pinkish reddish color 
until the accelerant was coursing through them. And in close-up shots from the behind-the-scenes footage, when we look at the pressure-suited engineer, it appears that the suit is meant to be a part of him and not removable, with dark-colored veins tended by the pathogen that run off the suit and onto the hands. In Prometheus, the suit protected the engineer from rifle fire, though it did take damage, but in the comics, the suits were far more formidable. To begin with, they employed some kind of dampening force field around the engineer, either reflecting fire or partially absorbing it. They threw everything they had at these guys trying to kill them. Pulse rifle and smart gun fire, predator shoulder cannons, engineer rifles, and even a damn harpoon. Yet the shield and the suit, though badly damaged, held on. They were only able to short out the shields by exposing the engineer to the pathogen, where rifle fire was finally able to put him down. The engineers of LV-223 were a spacefaring faction, so the suits may have offered some environmental protection, while they also allowed them to interface with their technology, such as their sleeping pods that connect to various ports on the suit. According to the Wayland yutani report, the suit's base material is unknown, and they note that the engineers had been sleeping for two millennia, and yet the suit showed no corrosion or degradation despite their advanced age, further speculating that it could be made of a self-repairing organic material. The outer shell that resembles the space jockey of LV-426 that is worn over the pressure suit is called a biosuit, a removable biomechanical set of armor found stored in the juggernauts that are used during space travel for interfacing with their pilot's chair, and for added protection, as a biosuited engineer was able to take a blast from Galgo's rifle to the back unfazed, though its armor wasn't enough to stop a queen alien from running her tail clean through him. Unfortunately, the most amazing piece of their arsenal was cut from Prometheus, only appearing in this section of an earlier draft of Alien Engineers by John Spates. As they stare inside, baffled, the wall across the corridor, directly behind them, silently unravels. The sleeper is revealed, a towering gargoyle in his flight suit. He steps forth, obscure devices clutched in his fists. Too late they perceive him. They spin, raise their guns, vanity and foolishness. This is the wrath of an angry god. It seems time slows down. The air roars in their ears, and then the sleeper strikes. The missiles he hurls at them are almost invisible, neither solid projectiles nor directed energy, more like knots tied in the fabric of space itself. The first missile crushes Ray like an invisible fist. The second splashes glass, a character not a window, against the wall like an insect. Now this is a weapon worthy of a race that has mastered technology. Invisible missiles of knotted space-time. While I'm betting that the phrase, it seems time slows down, was used to describe a quick reaction, but if the weapon can bend space-time, then it's possible that it could slow time itself during its use. This is the kind of crazy advanced tech that the engineers should possess. For more information on the Juggernaut ships, or Giger's astronauts that inspired the engineers, try out one of these videos.